Welcome to part two of this Museum Connect video inspired by the Donald Gross Herbarium. Here, families can learn how to make their own biodiversity journal with local artist James Aldridge. Before I hand over to him, if you'd like to know more about the Donald Gross Herbarium or even what it is, look out for part one on our website. Over to James. Hello, my name's James Aldridge. I'm an artist who works with people and with places. So generally I'll be out and about exploring either by myself, making artwork in response to the things that I see, the places I go and the things that I find, or working with groups, museums, schools, galleries, helping people to explore and discover their own local environment. Today what I wanted to do was to start off by sharing some of my artwork with you, some of those things that I've made outside in lots of different places, and then to show you something that you could do to explore your own local environment and start to think about how biodiverse it is. I don't know if you've heard of the word biodiversity before. What it basically means is how rich your local uh, animal and plant life is. So what we're going to do later is to create some kind of biodiversity journal, some kind of sketchbook that you can take out and record your own experiences of your local plants and animals and insects, wherever you may be. But first of all, I'll show you some of my artwork to give you some ideas. Sometimes I pick up objects, materials as I go along and I can make things like this. This is a, a walking bundle. So as I go, I'll be picking up feathers, pieces of stick, pieces of cloth, pieces of plastic even. I join them together and as I walk along they come together to create a bundle. Each one slightly different depending on the place and the materials that are available there and what shows itself to me. Apart from objects I might work onto paper and make what I like to call walking pages. Now these can record um, my different senses really and my sensory experience of that place. So this was in Savanac Forest at a pond there and as you can see there's words on there. I've written what I can hear, what I can smell and what I can uh, touch around me and then I've used the mud from around me. I've used materials that are local to that place to actually record the movements of the tadpoles. And then this one is slightly different. It brings those two elements together. So you've got the, the objects collected at the top. You can see here there's like a teasel, um, some grasses, a rubbing of a leaf, with a book at the bottom. And you can see this says Langford Lakes. So this is from the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust Reserve at Langford Lakes. And inside I've drawn, I've written, I've added things that I've found. So that combines the object and the page together. Well I've got some materials here that hopefully you should be able to find most of at home, or if not ask someone that you know to help you. I've got some card, so it's quite a thick card. Um, it's recycled card that I was using for something else. It's similar to the kind of card you might get on the back of a pad of paper or you could use some thick packaging. You two pieces the same size because these are going to be the covers of your book. I've got paper. Um, again, it doesn't matter too much what kind of paper. I've got a bit of a mixture here. I've got some drawing paper, some brown paper, some square paper, the kind of thing you might use more for maths and some black paper as well. So again, recycle what you have, reuse what you have, or if you've got access to things like watercolour paper, give that a try as well. So what you need to do next is to get these pieces of paper roughly the same size as the cover. It doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be exact. Um, the lovely thing about handmade books is that they are a little bit wobbly, they are a little bit different. All the pages don't need to be exactly the same size. But a handy way to do it is to draw around the card cover onto the paper and to cut that out. Once we've got them all cut out the same size what we do is to paper or you could use some thick packaging. You need two pieces the same size because these are going to be the covers of your book. I've got paper. Um, again it doesn't matter too much what kind of paper. I've got a bit of a mixture here. I've got some drawing paper, some brown paper, some square paper, the kind of thing you might use more for maths and some black paper as well. So again, recycle what you have, reuse what you have, or if you've got access to things like watercolour paper, give that a try as well. 
So what you need to do next is to get these pieces of paper roughly the same size as the cover. It doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be exact. Um, the lovely thing about handmade books is that they are a little bit wobbly, they are a little bit different. All the pages don't need to be exactly the same size. But a handy way to do it is to draw around the card cover onto the paper and to cut that out. Once we've got them all cut out the same size, what we do is to punch holes with a hole punch in both the pages and the covers. And then we use some string to join the pages and the covers together. The good thing about that is you can come back later, undo the string and add extra pages in if you need them. I've got all my pages roughly the same size. I've punched holes in them all. So I need to join it all together. Now one of the things I find quite helpful is to get a pointed pencil and to poke it through the hole just to help some of these pages to line up. So the string is all threaded through. We're going to tie it together. Um, it's important to leave it relatively loose when you're tying. You don't want it tied really tight like that because you won't be able to open it up properly and the pages will rip. So leave a little bit of a gap so it's a little bit loose like that. Tighten a bit of a bow so you can undo it again when you need to if you want to add other pages or anything and that's our working book make sure it can open and that's what we're going to take out for a walk to explore where we live hello so after i made my book it absolutely poured with rain so i went for a little walk and gathered some leaves and things that i found and then i decided it might be better if i actually make a start on um, working into my book in the garden. So here I am in my garden. It's autumn here at the moment and there's loads of lovely leaves lying around. Different shapes, different colours from the different kinds of trees. Depending on what time of year it is when you're doing your biodiversity diary you're going to find different things and that's fine. Respond to whatever's around you. So what I've started to do here is to record the leaves in different ways. I've done a rubbing, um, I've started to stick leaves in and I've been doing a drawing here with watercolour pencils I'm just adding some water to to really bring out those beautiful yellows and browns and oranges. And then what I'm going to try next is to add some writing. I can hear a bird calling near me, I want to describe that. And also I want to try some printing as well because I want to combine different ways of recording my environment together so I can bring in the sound and the texture, the shape and the colour and the pattern all on one page. So I'm printing using an ink pad, pressing the back of the leaf where all the nice textured veins are onto the ink. But you could just as easily put um, paint onto the back of the leaf and use that. And then press that down onto your paper. It might come out well, it might not. It's an experiment to see what happens. And there we go. So that's the first couple of pages of my biodiversity diary done. We don't necessarily need to know what these leaves are called, what kind of trees they're from, or what the birds are called even. If you do, record that, that's brilliant. Or you might want to look them up. If not, then just think about the shapes and the colours. Think about what your senses tell you about your environment and how biodiversity is. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you get out and get stuck in and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with.